Well, Ireland's government is nearing the end of its mandatory three-year review of the country's landmark abortion law. Following a nationwide vote in 2018, abortion became legal in the first 12 weeks of pregnancy. Since then, more than 13,000 abortions have been performed. Pro-lifers, however, are not remaining silent. Tomorrow, they will be holding a rally in Dublin. And recently, we caught up with one of the speakers at that rally. We go now to one of the speakers at tomorrow's March, Katie Asko, a Catholic journalist and mother of one with another little one on the way. Congratulations, Katie, and welcome back. Great to see you. Um, Thank you. you know, we're going to get to the march in just a second. But first, I'm curious if you could tell us about the government review. Um, do we know when it will conclude? And also, do pro-lifers, do they feel like their views are being represented? Mm, so the Irish government is undertaking a three-year review of its abortion law. This was something we knew was coming um, since 2018 when abortion was legalized. Attached to that was that there would be a review in three years' time. It has been a very disappointing process, unfortunately. It began at the beginning of this year, and it's expected to conclude sometime towards the end of this year. Um, and it's... it's uh, managed by the Minister for Health, Stephen Donnelly. And he his performance, his um, conduct has been incredibly biased. Unfortunately, this key stakeholders that he's been meeting with have been almost, in fact, not even almost, they have been exclusively um, on the pro-abortion side. He hasn't even had a meeting with his pro-life parliamentary colleagues who have been requesting meetings for many, many months now. I want to talk to the, talk about the march now. Um, can you tell us a little bit more uh, about it? Um, who are some of the speakers? Who there will be? And we understand that some of the participants include the country's new pro-life political party. Yes, so we're very excited for the march happening this Saturday, the 17th of September in Dublin. It's going to be starting at 2.30 p.m. We're going to have a list of speakers. First, it's a march. So we're doing a walk to Leinster House, which is where our government in Ireland sits. And then we're going to have a couple of speakers. Our keynote is Autumn Lindsay, who is a spokesperson for Students for Life America. And we're so excited to have her join us and just tell us about what's been happening in the U.S. because also you've had this success with the overturning of Roe v. Wade, which has given such hope to the international pro-life community. And we're going to be hearing from Rachel McKenzie, who is coming over from England. She is uh, post-abortive herself. She tells her story about having had two abortions. Uh, she talks about the need for women to know that they have alternative options, which is also a huge kind of key point of the march for us. And she talks about as well how she felt uh, mistreated in the hands of the pro-abortion movement. Uh, and then we're going to have uh, some politicians as well. We have uh, some really inspiring pro-life politicians here in Ireland who are so courageous to speak up for life when, uh, unfortunately, a lot of their colleagues do not, even though they might be personally pro-life. So these people are really putting their necks on the line and um, standing up for life for us, uh, for us in Ireland. You know, one third of the Irish people voted against abortion in 2018 when we had our referendum. Um, and that that's unfortunately not reflected Reflected um, in our in our government, except for these few small vo these small few voices who are very strong, very courageous, and we're really excited to hear from them this weekend. And Katie, quickly before I let you go, I know that you're speaking. Can you maybe give us a preview of what you're going to say? Yes, so I will be focusing on uh, the government's very, <laughs> very biased, unfortunately, hotline called My Options. It is uh, funded by the government and it's supposed to help women who are facing unplanned pregnancies to uh, figure out what their options are and what to do next. And the Students for Life here in Ireland have conducted research. They've called up my options um, many, many times. And unfortunately, their research shows that uh, these, these people uh, who are answering the phones are setting up uh, meetings with these women, uh, with doctors who lean towards abortion, who provide abortions. So it is unfortunately a, a situation where women 
women are being fast tracked down the road of abortion when they're even calling up saying, I'm not sure if if I want an abortion, I, you know, they're they're not even decided yet. And yet they are being kind of pushed down this route. So we're incredibly disappointed with that, given that the hotline's statement on their website says that it's about uh, non-bias, you know, offering all the options, including support for continued pregnancies. That does not seem to be the case whatsoever. So we'll be highlighting that in complete injustice uh, against women in Ireland. Well, Katie, thank you so much for taking the time to speak with us today. We appreciate it. God bless you for what you do. And we're praying for a successful march for you all. Thank you again. Thank you. Thank you.